they don't want to have to do any extra work. They don't want to have to put any extra effort forward. They want to get as much money as possible with as little effort as possible. You have the talent to do the hair, but you don't have the personal skills or the personable skills to be able to deal with customers in the way they deserve to be dealt with and treated with. And that is with respect. They don't necessarily want the satisfaction of being able to provide services for people. They want to be able to fund this wannabe lifestyle. They know they're going to be able to find a client that is willing to pay that, whether they are being scammed or not. Hey guys, what is up? It is Cam. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. All right, so in today's video, we are going to be talking about how Instagram stylists have ruined natural hair. And so in this video, I really kind of want to get into like the rise of Instagram hair stylists and how that parallels with the rise of the natural hair movement and how that parallels with the increase and influx of popularity of social media because I feel like these things are all sort of intertwined and connected with each other and they're basically causing like one another's downfall, especially whenever it comes to natural hair. So before before we get into this video, if you have not already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you never miss another one of my uploads. You can also subscribe to my second channel, that is my beauty and lifestyle channel. And if you want to keep up with me outside of YouTube, you can follow me on all my social media. Everything will be on the screen and linked down below. Without further ado, let's get into it. So I feel like I do this in every video, but I want to start this video off by prefacing that I don't want to go and drag Instagram hairstylists because I feel like there is a special place for people that want to have their own businesses and start their own businesses especially when it comes to the black community and especially when it comes to black women and for me personally I really 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 love to see the rise of black women starting their own businesses and whether that means they're in hair any other form of cosmetology or in like esthetician things I'm here for it all because I feel like at the end of the day there has been such like a lack of entrepreneurial ventures in the black community whenever it comes to like hair and barber and stuff like that I feel like that has very very, very deep roots in the black community and it's always been this, sort of this place where people go to not only get transformed to clean themselves up to boost their self-esteem you know just to get pretty to get nice fresh all of that stuff the hair salon the barbershop and the black community is so deeply rooted and has always been a very important and integral part of who we are as a people especially considering the stylist to customer relationship but also I think because of social media and because of the rise of like the natural hair movement and the fact that people just want to learn how to do more things as it pertains to black hair like we're not just doing relaxers anymore we're not just doing pressing curls anymore like we're not just doing roller sets anymore there is a place in a lane for everyone and as people are trying to figure out where their place in their lane is they're also simultaneously trying to figure out how to run a business and how to run a business properly and with that it's obviously going to come hiccups it's going to have peaks and valleys and a lot of people it doesn't come naturally to them so they're having to learn and or it may may not necessarily be the industry for them or the career for them but because of how they're seeing other people being able to create successful lives and being able to gain a certain popularity off of doing these things it's almost like oh well I know how to braid or lay a wig or do whatever so let me just start a business and lo and behold your personality doesn't work well with being a business owner being an entrepreneur having your own salon or your own styling suite or whatever the case may be and that is why we're seeing a lot of the issues that we are seeing with these Instagram styles and people just becoming completely turned off with wanting to deal with them because it has become ridiculous. And so I want to get into all of that today. Before we get fully into it, I do want to give a special shout out to Natural Girl Wigs. I want to thank them for sponsoring this video. Natural Girl Wigs is a website where they sell natural texture wigs. You guys know I'm all about natural hair. I actually have in some of their clip-ins that they sent me. They were so kind, so nice. Remy, the owner, I freaking love her. She's incredible. So they sent me some of their clip-ins and I'm gonna share them with you guys. I have them in right now and I freaking love the way that I can just like pop these into my hair. They give me a little bit of extra volume. They give me a little bit of extra length. I want to share them with you. Make sure you check out the description box and the screen for code so you can get money off of your purchase as well as if you want to purchase the exact same clip-ins that I got because I just think they're phenomenal and I can't say enough good things about natural girl wigs. If you want any sort of extensions, they have natural texture 
textures ranging all the way from loose curls to kinky curls like I'm talking about type 3 to type 4 for C and they have like I said clip-ins they have wigs they have headband wigs they have bundles if you want to do it with a sew-in they have everything that you need I would suggest you go over there and run it up and get you some natural textured hair extensions thank you so much natural girl wigs and yeah let's get into the rest of the video so to start everything off I want to kind of go back to what I was saying in the introduction of this video of how I want this to sort of be a critique of how the influx of young black women starting and creating these hair businesses has created a culture of bad customer services, inconsistent quality of work, and overall frequent negative customer experiences. These hairstyles out here are frustrating and I know a lot of you guys can relate because in the last video event session that I kind of had about a hairstylist a lot of people were saying they've had similar experiences. I even have girlfriends, cousins, family members that just have trash experiences with hairstylists even random strangers I'll see on social media honestly just that industry I don't want to generalize because I think I think I haven't experienced them really but I think there's a select you handful of professional timely considerate just nice good positive vibes hairstylists I don't know who they are but fingers crossed, I do want to believe in my heart and soul that there are a select few and that this is not the masses. But I will say it's the majority. I just believe that because I've just heard too many horror stories, experiences, and, it, and it's frustrating because you spend so much time, like your hair is a form of an investment. And when the person that you're giving this money to as you're investing in yourself, when you don't get that service and that quality that you, you're paying good money, it's just, the experience is just very frustrating. Because like I was saying before, it is incredibly important for members of the black community and especially black women to be able to break into these entrepreneurial roles because that representation is needed and I feel like there should be more, there should be more, there should be more. And I'm never going to knock anyone that wants to start their own business or is going to put themselves out there and put out an investment on themselves, an investment on their community. I would never ever knock that because I think it is important, it is needed, and it is like detrimental. But my question is, how does it benefit if if people aren't truly trying to have a business that properly serves their consumer base and their community and could this rise in social media and Instagram hairstylists be of similar detriment to like the regular regular people who decide to go get their hair done as much as it could possibly be of a detriment to the Instagram stylists and the people trying to start and run these businesses and so what I kind of want to get into first is kind of the context of hair whenever it comes to black women and the black community because I feel like for black women hair holds a lot of weight I feel like a lot of us have come from a place especially growing up where we didn't even realize that we could grow long hair we did not realize that our hair could grow past our shoulders we didn't realize that black women black people could have long healthy incredible hair because I feel like it was fed to us for a very very long time all of the negative factors of our hair such as things like it's ugly it's nappy it's unkept it's unprofessional it's difficult to manage it's dirty etc 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 like I think for us with this idea of hair we hold so so many deep roots into it because it has been something that has been traumatic for us it has been something that has been incredibly hard for us to get around and to learn like we went through periods of time where we had to completely assimilate periods of time where we weren't even allowed to show our hair and like all of this is a part of black history it's a part of the transatlantic slave trade it's a part of the Jim Crow era it's a part of like the introduction of the relaxer in order to have us further assimilate into stereotypical Eurocentric beauty standards especially here in the US so for us it's really really important and it's something that is a big deal and I feel like once we started this whole natural hair era a lot of black women were really wanting to go on this journey with their hair where they learn to take care of their hair they learn to love their hair they learn to style their hair and ultimately they learn to grow their hair because like I was saying before like a lot of us didn't even know or didn't even realize that black girls especially in the type 4 category could grow long hair like we were put under the impression for so long that the only black people that could grow long hair is if they were biracial or if they had a good hair type and by that I mean like in the type threes but like the truth is anyone can grow hair like one thing that my mom used to tell me as a child because my mom has always had long hair I have always looked up to her whenever it has come to natural hair because my entire life she has had long curly natural hair one thing that she's always told me is that as long as you're alive your hair is going to grow and so I think a lot of us are figuring out that it's not about our hair not growing it's about us not realizing that the health of our hair plays a large factor into its growth and that in order for 
for us to see results we're going to have to learn how to retain the lens and that's like the big that's the big idea and so once we realized this we sort of started taking matters into our own hands but I think that once we begin to entrust someone else with our hair that's when it becomes an even bigger deal and especially because hair holds so much weight if you are going to put that trust into someone else to do your hair and they mess it up it is quite traumatizing like as a black girl it is quite traumatizing I can't tell you how many bad hair days I have had where it's literally like anxiety inducing like I'm about to have a mental breakdown crying screaming throwing up in the corner because my hair is not coming out right or it's not what I thought it was going to be and like I'm rushing it's last minute like there's there's no other option like it's really this is a big deal I think this is a big deal for black women more so than any other group of people like I can't put my hair up in a messy bun when I'm having a bad hair day like a messy bun is gonna take me at least half an hour and I don't have that type of time so whenever it comes to us and our hair like it is that deep and I've had people ask me why I place so much emphasis into the way that my hair looks and why I care so much about the way that it looks all the time and that's because it is that deep for us because for so long we have been judged very harshly very critically we have been discriminated against because of our hair and so it's important for us to make sure that things are in place and that things are done and I feel like once people start to realize that black women are not only their hair but it's only an extension of them and that we should be able to wear it how we want to wear it I think things will get better in that regard but I think until then it's going to continue to be a big deal and that is part of the reason why I feel like a lot of people are upset with Instagram stylists because it's literally like you are playing with in a lot of cases the weight of people's self-esteem like I can't tell you how many TikTok videos I have watched of girls getting in the car crying crying after having a poor experience with an Instagram stylist because it didn't come out the way that they wanted it to or because it was completely terrible quality of work and they spent so much money like it's a big deal and that it's that deep and that this is something that has affected a lot of people and so I want to start with the ridiculous pricing because this is probably one of the hottest topics whenever it comes to Instagram stylists or just the rise in stylists on social media in general is why are these people charging so much people are talking about paying a thousand dollars for some butt length small knotless box braids what on earth has possessed you to think you can charge that much for a set of knotless box braids I just have one question for you ragadocious people is the IRS aware of the fact that you guys are charging a thousand dollars for braids quickly yes or no because y'all keep playing around and we can let them know we've lost the plot you people have lost your everlasting minds one month's rent for some braids that are gonna last three business seconds it's time to start fighting back these ig stylists some of them need to be made into examples is the only way we're gonna start ringing the irs keep playing these prices are audacious considering half of y'all don't even have a hair license the authorities will be informed jeffrey bezos could be my sugar daddy and i still would not pay eleven hundred dollars for knotless braids y'all are not charging to make an honest living anymore you guys are charging to be jada Weta. i'm tired of funding y'all's crab legs and trips to miami it's enough why y'all trying to make engineer salaries off braids on top of the fact that a lot of the times if your quality of work is not worth that amount of money what makes you believe that you have the right to charge this price knowing that a lot of the times unless you are within a certain tax bracket people are not going to be able to afford it and i get it the people that are able to afford it like kudos to them like you have that clientele but i think with the critique in price that is very very largely popular now a lot of people are starting to try and go back to the roots they're going back to the aunties they're going back to the African braiders there have been so many instances where people are like it would be cheaper for me to fly over to Africa get my hair braided not list whatever color I want down to my freaking ankles before I stay in the States and pay someone because people are trying to charge an arm and a leg for braids for wig installs for locks for all different types of protective styles $1,100 for braids in America is so crazy that you're better off taking a flight to Jamaica for under $600 you still get a vacation so you get her vacation and your braids. <laughs> This girl got her braids for $40. This girl got hers for $35. Max I'm seeing is $100. And you get a vacation on top of it. So let's say like your Airbnb, you're there for like four days. Your Airbnb is like $400. Vacation plus the braids themselves. And so not only are people starting to go back to the roots, like, and by the roots, I mean the motherland, I mean Africa. People are literally flying over there just to get their hair braided. And if they're not flying all the way over to Africa to get their hair braided, because they know not only are they going to get consistent 
decent result. They're going to get their money's worth and this stuff is going to last because these people actually know what they're doing and have the technique to be able to do the work properly and do the work properly and quickly. On top of that, if they're not flying over to Africa, they're going back to the African braiders where they're charging more reasonable prices. And if all else fails, people are just going and learning how to do the junk themselves so that they don't have to pay anybody any money or go anywhere to get their hair done. For some people, that is more worth it than going and spending a whole band, going and spending a whole month's worth of rent on trying to make sure they look good or trying to make sure they have their hair done. Because I think especially whenever it comes to this whole entrepreneurship thing and starting your own business, especially when you're not working out of a salon, like you can set whatever price you want and who's gonna fight about it. If you don't like it, you could go somewhere else. And I feel like that's the attitude that a lot of these stylists take up and the attitude that a lot of them have whenever it comes to the price. Because especially with social media, they know they're going to be able to find a client that is willing to pay that whether they are being scammed or not. But I think on the other side of it, a lot of these stylists are using the rebuttal that obviously these styles take time. These styles are wear and tear on your body, of course. So you want to be paid for your time. You want to be paid for your product. You want to be paid for the wear and tear that it puts on your body. And I think that is a valid opinion. But I feel like once you get to the point of no return where you're literally charging people arm and a leg for braids that probably aren't going to stay in for more than six weeks, shouldn't stay in for more than six weeks. Because let's talk about how protective styles no longer are protective and are actually damaging if you're leaving them in past a certain point when you're using something right here. We're not going to get into that conversation today, but let me just say when you're paying that much money for a style that's probably not even going to last, then that is where it kind of starts to become a little bit ridiculous. And I think this is the problem that a lot of people are starting to have, which is why, like I said, they're going back to the roots. And if they're not going back to the African braiding shops or going straight to Africa or learning how to do it themselves, they are finding stylists that are charging reasonable prices and they're sticking with them. And so I feel like at this point, everybody knows about the rules and regulations that these Instagram stylists tend to have whenever it comes to running their business. I'm not exactly sure who started the trend of having like this page long website full of rules before you can even book. And it's almost like the same thing when you're trying to purchase something and before you can purchase it, you have to agree to the terms and conditions and it's not gonna let you move forward unless you agree. And it's like freaking 30 pages worth of terms and agreements and you just click agree so you can go ahead and buy your stuff because who's about to read that? It's, it's giving the same vibes as that. I don't ever wanna hear anybody complain about me wearing a bonnet outside the house because do you see how much these braiders are charging? This lady's prices go from $780 to $1,000 and it does not include a wash, does not include detangling. You have to come with your hair already blown out and straightened out. For small, medium, knotless braids that are thigh length, they are $1,000. But for knee length, it's an extra $300. Last time I checked, your thighs and your knees are not that far from each other. Why is it an extra $300? Even for a wig install. I know it's hot, so it's not even wig install season. But the fact that these hairstylists want you to come with a brand new wig every time just tells me they don't know how to do hair. If I can install my used wig by myself, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do that. Like you missing out on money. Nobody is going to buy a brand new wig every time. Now you can't even get your hair done if you have a blunt cut or your hair is trimmed like just say you don't know how to do hair y'all already get away with the fact that y'all don't wash hair even though when you got your license you were taught that for the most part you are required to wash hair before you start and now we doing this shorty really said if you don't have edges your appointment is canceled what if you have alopecia this lady is charging damn near 750 dollars for small butt length knotless braids and she won't even comb your hair if the comb won't go through your hair she's canceling your appointment it makes no sense to me like y'all really must not want to make any money like i get it you want to live a life of comfort but not at my expense so yeah not too fucking much i'm gonna be wearing this bonnet for a little minute and so there was a point in time where i guess people decided that it made a lot of sense and it was necessary to have a full page length and tiny little text website of rules and regulations before booking in order for i guess their customer or clientele to know what to expect going into the service and going into the experience and I think a lot of people have an issue with it because like I was saying before because these people are running their own 
businesses and not kind of necessarily linked to a salon they are able to come up with whatever and there's no regulation there's no standard there's no code a lot of the times you're seeing things like oh you must come wash blow dried and sometimes even pressed if this particular stylist does not know how to work with kinkier hair textures and this is more specifically pointing towards like 4c i've seen many videos on the internet where stylists are saying basically if your hair is not pressed out dang near they're not going to be able to service you and they're going to turn you away and keep your deposit and charge you a late fee it's ridiculous and with the deposit situations the late fee situations late fee situations that don't even apply the other way around if the particular stylist does not start your appointment on time is absolutely ludicrous and there are people justifying these rules and regulations with weak and poor arguments because i think it's unreasonable to expect not to be treated professionally and at least with grace i feel like whenever it comes to the styling industry and the beauty industry like it is a very very personable and very vulnerable situation where like you're entrusting your whole head your whole head of hair in someone else's hands and you're bonding you're forming a relationship a connection with this person that is doing your hair and the fact that overall there just is no grace whenever it comes to these people trying to do your hair like they're literally just trying to get their money and that is it and the more ways they can charge you the better like people are charging for hair density nowadays people are charging for hair length nowadays people are charging if you show up five minutes minutes late to your appointment and if you show up 10 minutes late to your appointment they're just going to cancel your appointment altogether and keep your deposit and it's these things that don't apply the other way around if it's an inconvenience to the customer themselves i.e if you're starting their appointment late or if you cancel their appointment the day of or five minutes before 15 minutes before with no notice like people are keeping deposits canceling appointments and keeping deposits and refusing to give out refunds and so i think a lot of the times with these very very strict rules and regulations people are not happy because because it's like how are you going to say that all of these things are required of me yet if it were the other way around you would not require these things of yourself and on top of that there is no grace or leniency dealing with me as a person as a human as someone that also has a life where things come up and things happen and we're supposed to be forming this connection this bond from me as your client to you as my hairstylist a lot of the times it just doesn't make any sense and I think that's why a lot of people are upset and so I want to touch on poor customer service really quick because I feel like this is like one of the main arguments all of these arguments are main arguments but the poor customer service I feel like is what gags people the most because it's almost like how are you going to start a business how are you going to go into the service industry and be unwilling to serve the people that come requesting a service from you it's almost like it doesn't make sense it doesn't make any sense actually as someone who is a licensed cosmetologist in two separate states I completely understand why clients are over these new age hairstylists and why they are fed up with you guys both y'all are full of shit. like these new age girls really be smoking First off, y'all be having rules that sound like a crackhead themselves wrote the sh So many rules and requirements, and I'm like, you're charging upwards of $250, $300 plus, dollars, and you don't even wash or blow dry your client's hair. They gotta come wash and blow dry, so they're doing half the service themselves. And you learn in school, which I know a lot of didn't go, but you learn in cosmetology school that it's so important to wash your client's hair yourself because a lot of people either physically cannot properly wash their hair or they just genuinely don't know how to properly wash their hair. So y'all doing these services on dirty ass hair. And then to top it off, the attitude be shit, the customer service be shit, the whole experience be shit. Then you're doing it out of your crib, which there's nothing wrong with doing it out of your crib. I know a lot of girls who do hair out of their crib and they are fine. The issue is you're charging prices that you would be, that would make a lot more sense if you had boot front to pay. You don't have no boot front to pay. You don't work in a salon, sis. Why are you charging these prices? And you don't wash their hair and you don't blow dry their You couldn't even cut their shit. They needed their real hair cut. They ends is broke all the way. Half of they hold the whole shaft just up. don't know shit about their real hair or anything these modern hairstylists have gotten hairstylists have gotten lazy as f but also expensive as f how you charging more you lazy as shit? like you bitches are lazy you cannot be mad at clients for calling y'all out and then when people call it out it's like oh y'all just need to go to somebody y'all can afford it's not the price it's the principle what are what what are the girlies paying for what are they paying for what are they paying for the hair not included they doing half the work and they got your crib ma'am smoking gotta be gotta be drugs i feel like everyone knows about the classic hey boo text like that is just the epitome of like the day is about to go bad because this person is about to cancel my appointment 15 minutes before i walk out the door and i feel like a lot of the times there is no consideration for the actual client themselves when you are inconveniencing them and like i was saying in the section before it's like you're charging people convenience fees but when you inconvenience them as a stylist there is no remorse first and second and there is no financial reimbursement for the inconvenience that you've caused 
like there have been multiple stories where people will get up early in the morning drive an hour drive two hours to go to this place to get their hair done they get outside and they're waiting for five minutes ten minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes 40 minutes lo and behold the stylist canceled their appointment didn't say anything and is not coming and will not refund a deposit or will not give them their money back for the service that they have been charged for and like I said before a lot of the times it's no remorse and it's almost like people just do things whenever they feel like it and if they don't feel like it they're not going to do it and they're not worrying about whether or not they're inconveniencing you but of course if you inconvenience them you're going to have to run them a check you're going to have to pay them some money and I think that this whole hey boo tech situation is something that a lot of us joke about even though in the moment it's actually incredibly frustrating and a lot of people like shed tears have full mental breakdowns in their car like are shaking crying with anger and rage because of how inconveniencing it is and how it feels like this person that you're trying to book with that you are trying to get a service from literally does not care about you the only thing they care about is your money and if you don't have money to offer them then you can kick rocks and buy your life and that brings me to my very next point about kitchen stylists like I have mentioned multiple multiple times in this video a lot of people are not basing these businesses out of salons anymore they are either renting out studios or you're straight up gonna go to their house and be in their kitchen and they're going to be doing your hair not in a necessarily professional establishment a lot of the times they have to do this because they either don't have a license or don't have a certification and like I was saying before you have to come wash and blow dry and sometimes press depending on whether or not the stylist feels like they can work on your particular hair texture and a lot of that is because people that are not licensed or certified cannot legally wash hair technically whatever and also they don't want to have to do any extra work they don't want to have to put any extra effort forward they want to get as much money as possible with as little effort as possible and granted it does take a long time to do certain hairstyles whether that be braids locks twists any other sort of protective style and even laying wigs like these things do take time but like I was saying before since they don't work out of salons they set standards themselves and they only have to maintain these standards for themselves and there are no rules and regulations on what they can and can't do because at the end of the day it is their business and like I said before if you don't like it you can kick rocks and so it's this notion that if you don't like it you can go somewhere else and I definitely do think it's unfair to blame the customer because I feel like if you are portraying a certain vibe and aesthetic with your work on like your social media pages and that's the reason why people want to book with you because they see your work and they see that you have nice work yet when they get to your kitchen or they get to your suite or whatever and it's a completely different story like you have a nasty attitude you're not treating them with respect and you're not providing the quality of work that is similar to what is posted in your portfolio a lot of the times people don't really know what to do and they feel like even though you are working out of your house or you're working out of a suite if your work looks good they're willing to work with you but if they roll up and it's a completely different story not only is that negatively impacting your future consumer base but people don't really care about their future consumer base because like I was saying before with the rise of social media every client is replaceable and you can get clients like this like this like this like this like this and even if someone does not return to you or they decide not to come back to you it literally doesn't matter because by people seeing your work on social media and thinking that you can deliver something that you really can't or if you don't feel like it you're not going to they almost get tricked into booking with you and you give them a less than quality experience and so that brings me to my next point because social media has become so popular and stylists on social media have become so popular like you have the people that lay wigs like arrogant tay you have the people that do amazing braids like dope panna and with the rise of youtube tutorials and tiktok and people just being able to go on the internet search up and learn whatever it is they want to learn and you see these really popular really successful braiders and wig stylists being able to come up and work with celebrities being able to come up and make like a killing make a really good living off of styling and doing hair people have started to peep that you can live a certain lifestyle once you reach a certain level of success within the industry and because of that people are pushing to get a seat at the table and while I feel like there is a spot for everybody there is a seat for everybody everybody can eat there is enough money in the pool for everybody to get a piece I do think that the industry is not for everyone and just because you may be talented in a particular area just because you can break just because you can lay a wig just because you can do a bomb sewing or whatever the case may be customer service is not for everyone providing a service for people is not for everyone and I think because of the way that social media makes it look people believe that they can do something that they can't or that they are gifted in ways that they aren't and it's creating a lot of these businesses that people are having negative experiences with because it's almost like you have the talent to do the hair but you don't have the personal skills or the personable skills to be 
be able to deal with customers in the way they deserve to be dealt with and treated with and that is with respect and so like i was saying because the natural hair movement has increased popularity with black people more specifically black women wanting to learn how to do their hair take care of their hair style their hair there has been a rise and influx and spike in protective styles like braids locks wigs and especially with wigs considering the new and improved lace options and so there are many people who have learned to specialize in certain areas and certain styles like there are people that only do braids there are people that only do faux locks there are people that only lay wigs and these are the things that they're good at people that only do sew-ins only do silk presses and these are the things that they are good at this is what they stick to and this is where a majority of their consumer base comes from and because so many people have access to be able to learn how to do these styles there is an influx and an increase of people wanting to go ahead and start these businesses because they want to be able to go live the life that they feel like they can achieve by being in the hair industry like some of the top stylists and so because there are so many instagram stylists that have been able to get famous go viral and become very popular for their work they have been able to start living a lifestyle similar to popular or successful influencers celebrities and people within that realm and i think that is what a lot of these girls want they don't necessarily want the satisfaction of being able to provide services for people and good services at that for people they want to be able to live this lifestyle they want to be able to fund this wannabe lifestyle and that kind of goes into what i was saying in my most recent video about sort of this idea of seeing this facade or seeing this snapshot of a perfect life on social media and then wanting that aspiring to have that and then trying to do or copy the same exact steps that someone else has done in order to get there when you don't even necessarily know the full and true story because again social media is fake and people only post highlight reels people only post the ups and the peaks and not necessarily the low moments in the valleys of things where you're seeing them being able to buy bags you're seeing them being able to buy luxury cars designer clothes designer shoes and all these other things and you're thinking that oh if they can do this just by braiding or just by laying wigs or just by doing hair then I can too especially considering that I can go on platforms like YouTube or TikTok and learn how to do it practice it for a little while build up a little bit of a clientele base and then begin charging them crazy prices and not providing the quality of work that is up to par with some of these famous or celebrity Instagram hairstylists and it doesn't work like that people I feel like truly think that these particular lifestyles are more attainable than what they actually are and because these people aren't necessarily showing every single thing that they had to do in order to be able to live this lifestyle and come to a place where they're able to fund this lifestyle a lot of people don't actually know everything that goes into it and so they're blindly thinking that they can just do hair and be able to live the same way and that's not the case and I feel like that really separates the stylists that want to be stylists because it's something that they love doing versus the stylists that become stylists and want to be stylists in order to get a quick buck in order to come up to fund a lifestyle similar to the ones that they see all over social media and so I feel like at this point black women feel like they only have two options you can either find a stylist that you love that does great work that has great customer service that just is the full package and you stick with them you're loyal to them don't go anywhere else because you probably will be disappointed or you can learn how to do whatever it is that you want to do yourself so that you don't necessarily have to rely on someone else to do it for you and so I feel like a lot of black women particularly are fed up because they feel like it definitely should not be this hard to find a good quality stylist especially to get a service done as basic as your hair and then on top of that a lot of them are fed up because they can't figure out how to manage their own hair properly but they also can't find somebody that they trust to do it and so all of this is sparking a new frustration with natural hair with the natural hair movement and so you're seeing a lot of people going back to relaxers and you're seeing also a lot of people if they're not going back to relaxers then they're transitioning over into locks so yeah I feel like at the end of the day the sort of idea of Instagram hairstylist ruining natural hair is a very very interesting topic because of the factors that it plays into the rise and fall of the natural hair movement and also because of how it plays into this idea of black women starting to pursue more entrepreneurial career paths and it being placed largely into that beauty industry and a lot of us feel like we can rely on people that look like us and that people that look like us won't do us wrong because they know what it's like to be done wrong but I feel like a lot of the times that is not the case and people are extremely disappointed people are extremely frustrated and people are extremely upset because they feel like they're not getting treated the, the way that they deserve to be treated especially when they're going and spending their hard-earned money paying for a service so yeah that is it for this video if you enjoyed it make sure you go ahead and give it a thumbs up also again special thank you special shout
shout out to Natural Girl Wigs for sponsoring this video. If you guys want to get natural textured hair extensions, Natural Girl Wigs is the place to go. I freaking love their extensions. Like I was saying before, I have them in my hair right now. I've been wearing them literally since I got them because I can't get enough. If you guys want to get money off of your order, go ahead and look at the screen for all the codes and check the description box for all the links. All the information will be there and I will also put the details of the specific hair that I have down there as well. So if you want to get exactly what I have, then you can definitely do that as well. So yeah, if you made it this far into the video, go ahead and comment this emoji so that I know you made it this far in the video. I will absolutely freaking love you forever. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you never ever miss another one of my uploads. You guys know I'm in school, so we'll be kicking my behind. That's why I'd be gone for so long. But click the notification bell so that when I do come back, you know exactly when I come back and you can go ahead and watch watch the content because I, I do my best. And also you can subscribe to my second channel that is my beauty and lifestyle channel. I will have that on the screen as well. That is where I post more of my vlogs. So you guys, if you want to see what I'm doing at school and the reason why I just be going MIA sometimes on here, that's on my second channel. And also if you want to see how I style my hair and just like other like girly things, like very like beauty related, anything beauty related, all of that is on that channel. And if you want to keep with me outside of YouTube, you can follow me on all my social media. Everything will be on the screen and down below. And yeah, that is all. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to be the light and I will see you in my next one. Bye.